That's right. But before we jump in, we're going to um, start off with an icebreaker. Yay. So, check this out guys. So, what you're going to need is a neat shirt, formal shirt. a formal shirt, and then a blindfold, and a knotted tie. So we're going to use this for an icebreaker. But what are we going to do, Carl? Are we going to go someplace fancy? No, so... What we're going to do is, you need to be blindfolded, I'm going to put the shirt on and I'm going to give you the tie the tie, and then you need to put the tie around my neck and see if you can get me as neat as possible and the, the one that gets the other person neat first wins. Ooh, so it's a competition. That's right. And we're going to do this by faith. We're going to do this by faith. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready, but we must be pre prepared for it's going to put on the bond. That's right. Okay. Do you have your shirt on? Not yet. I'm waiting for you. I have faith that you can put your shirt on. <laughs> Here's the tie. Thank you. Yeah, I got So I've got the shirt on and Franza needs to put the tie around my neck and button the shirt up. Okay. Yeah, the buttons as well. Only the, the top one. Oh, okay. Only the top one. One, two, three, go! Let me show you it. How many buttons are there? You need to feel the... Think is it neat enough? Ooh. It, now it is. Hmm. No, it's not yet. Really? Okay, let's see if you can do it better. Okay. Okay, guys, so now it's Carl's turn to try. You can put on your blindfold. Say when I can start. Are you sure your eyes are closed? No cheating. You trust Carl? I do. I'm honest. I 
I struggle with buttons. Especially when you're not CA. That's right. You must move on, Carl. I'm sure I'm beating you for this one. Definitely. I think you'll be quicker than me. And what does it go? Yay! <laughs> Why does it do? Is it me? I think in terms of quality, I won. I think so too. You can take the, the credit for this one. Thank you. So I, guys, I hope you guys also did the same and that you had great fun. Go and button up mom and dad with a... A tie. <laughs> a tie and a neat shirt. And if you do it with your sister or your brother, don't choke them, okay? Be gentle. Be gentle, guys. So, are you ready to jump into the program? Yes, I think so. So, first off, we're going to start with some stretches. Yay! And when you warm up, we're going to do some birthdays. And after that, we're going to worship. Cool! And then, we're going to do a story time about Abraham. And after that, we're going to do a nice activity. And then, we are going to do the memory verse. I bet you can still remember it from last week. And after that, we are going to pray. Cool. Alright guys, we're ready. Are you ready? Let's jump in. Yay! Check it out! 
Good morning, Riverflow kids. We're so fortunate to be able to be with you today, and we're lucky enough to announce the birthdays for August month. Shall we kick it off? Firstly, we have Marcus Gagiano. Marcus, you're turning five years old on the 25th of August. Congratulations, Marcus. Marcus, did you know that your name means shining and hammer? Marcus, may you always be able to be a shining light for Jesus in this dark world. Next off, we have Zanay Rousseau. Zanay, you're turning 10 years old on the 27th of August. Congratulations, Zanay. Zanay, your name means God is gracious. May you always be able to be gracious towards your friends. May you be able to show them God's character when they make mistakes. And lastly, we have Ethan Kruger. Ethan, you're turning six years old on the 28th of August. Congratulations, Ethan. Ethan, did you know that your name means solid and steadfast? Ethan, in this world that is in such chaos, may you always be able to show people what God's character is like, never changing. Congratulations from the entire Riverflow family. We hope that you have a wonderful month and an even better celebration. Bye-bye.
able to worship Jesus, now we're going to go into some story time. We're going to learn all about Abraham who had crazy facts. We're going, to, we're going to see what happened in that story where Abraham had to offer his son. Let's check it out. Let's a long time ago in the land of Canaan, there lived a good and noble man named Abraham. He was an important man because God picked his family to play a part in the plan to rescue the whole world. In order to set this plan in motion, God made a covenant with him. A covenant is like a big promise that lasts forever, and God's covenant with Abraham was a special one. One cool night, God told Abraham to look up at the sky. How many stars do you see? He asked. Abraham gazed up into the cloudless sky, which was lit up in every direction with thousands of stars. As far as he could see, he knew that he could not count them if he tried. So he answered, I do not know. There are too many to count. God already knew how many stars there were, but he was using it as an example to show Abraham just how big of a promise he was making. I am going to give you more children in your family than there are stars in the sky. Abraham was very surprised to hear this. He loved the thought of having a huge family, but there was one problem. He and his wife Sarah weren't able to have any children, and now they were too old. It seemed impossible but Abraham chose to trust God and believe his promise. And ten years later, God kept that promise. Abraham and Sarah had a son named Isaac. Abraham loved God with all of his heart, and he was so thankful for the blessings that God had given to him. However, God was about to put that love to the test. In the days of Abraham, one of the ways that people showed their love and thankfulness was by bringing sacrifices to God. A sacrifice is like a gift. It's something that you give to God to show Him that you are willing to obey Him, even when it costs you something. Usually, people would sacrifice an animal, like a lamb or a goat. But when Isaac was still a young boy, God asked Abraham for a different kind of sacrifice. God said to him, This year, when you bring me your sacrifice, instead of killing an animal and giving it to me, I want you to give me your only son, Isaac. Abraham was shocked. No, not Isaac, he thought. How can I possibly kill him? How can I give his life away? But Abraham remembered God's covenant promise. God told him, I will make you the father of many nations. Abraham knew that could not happen without a son, so he decided to trust God even though he did not know how it would work out. The next morning, Abraham got up early and gathered the supplies that they would need for the sacrifice and the journey up the mountain. He rounded up Isaac, kissed Sarah goodbye, and began the three-day journey to the place where they offered sacrifices to God. Isaac had been on these trips with Abraham several times, and along the way, he realized that something was missing. Father, we forgot to bring something for the sacrifice, Isaac said to Abraham. Abraham replied, Do not worry, son. God will provide for us a sacrifice. Abraham was quiet the rest of the trip, and Isaac could tell that something was not quite right. When they reached the top, Isaac began helping his father build an altar out of stones, all the while wondering what they were going to sacrifice. After they had finished placing the firewood on top of the altar, Abraham sat down with Isaac to explain what God was asking him to do. With tears filling his eyes, Abraham said, Son, I love you so much. You are a gift from God to us, and he has asked me to offer you as a sacrifice to him. As much as it hurts me, I am going to put my trust in our God. Isaac did not fully understand, but he trusted his father as much as his father trusted God, so he agreed. Abraham wept as he tied up his precious son and laid him on the altar they just built together. He reached for his knife, tears streaming down his face, and raised it in the air. More than anything, he wanted to cut his son free, but he knew what he had to do. He took one last look at his son and said, I love you, my boy. And with that, he reached out the knife above Isaac, with his hand shaking and his heart hurting. 
he was willing to obey God and take the life of his only son. Suddenly, just before Abraham went through with the sacrifice, he heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Stop! Abraham froze. He knew that voice. It was God. I don't want you to kill the boy, God continued. I want him to live. I now know that you love me because you were willing to sacrifice your only son. Abraham fell to his knees and thanked God, grateful that he would not lose his son. He cut Isaac loose and gave him the biggest hug a father has ever given his son. He still had tears running down his face, but now they were tears of joy. Just then, they heard a rustling noise in the woods behind them. They turned to see a ram whose horns had gotten caught in some branches. Isaac remembered what Abraham had told him on the way up the mountain. Look, father, God provided an animal for the sacrifice, just like you said he would. On the way back home, Abraham walked with his arm around Isaac, holding him closely. He thanked God for his goodness and knew more than ever that he could trust God with everything. Okay, hey guys, what an amazing story. So, Abraham had next level faith, eh? Definitely. Sure. I think I wouldn't obey. I think I would have stayed and I wouldn't take my one and only son. Yeah, sure, that's quite crazy, eh? But I'm so glad that the end of the story was that he didn't really offer his son. Thank you, Jesus. That's amazing. So, how do you think Abraham felt when he heard that he needed to sacrifice his one and only son? Sure, I think he was shocked and he was very, very scared. Yes, and still... Because he waited so long for Isaac and then he heard that he had to offer him. Yeah. Didn't make sense, eh? Not at all. And how do you think Isaac felt when he heard that he needed to be sacrificed? Imagine your daddy wants to sacrifice you. Oh. I think he was very, 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 very scared. I think so too. And the last question that I've got is, how do you think God felt when Abraham obeyed him? I think God was very, very pleased. That's amazing. You see, God is a good God and he wouldn't allow Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son. But this is a type and shadow of what was to come one day. And it was Jesus, God's one and only son, that was crucified and actually being sacrificed so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So you see, it's a type and shadow of what is to come. We are so glad that God provided a ram for an offering and that Isaac doesn't have to be sacrificed. And what is so cool is that Jesus came from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And Jesus came from the offspring of them. So that is amazing. That's very cool. And what, something that's very cool for me from this, this event in the Bible as well, is it really shows that God looks at the heart. That's he right. wants to be first in our lives and He wants nothing, not even our children or our mommy and, mommy and daddy or our brother and our sister to be more important than our faith and our love for Him. That's right. God wants us to put Him first. 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 And we want to ask you guys, please don't go and offer stuff now. Jesus was the last and final offering. We don't have to take any offerings. You don't have to build an altar to give offerings. We can just worship Jesus out of our hearts. Guys, let's move on to the next. Check out this awesome activity. Yay, get your scissors, get everything ready, and let's jump in. Great. Cool. Hey, Rickets. For today's activity, we're going to be making a ram. You're going to be needing a paper plate, a black marker, a pair of scissors, remember to always be very careful when cutting with scissors, some cotton balls, and a piece of elastic. It just has to be long enough to go around your head. And also a glue stick. On the paper plate, Going to take your black marker and draw out this design. And then, after you've drawn it on, you need to take your scissors and cut it out. Remember to be very careful. The spot is the hole of your eye. 
and now we're going to cut out the face. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now that we have our three pieces, so you to take the pieces and you can either glue them or you can take a stapler and put them on the back of, on the brown part of your paper plate, not the white part. Staple. Staple. Now we take our black marker and draw on the top of the eye part of the ram, color it in, top of the eye part, and now we do the nose. Remember a ram also has nostrils, so don't color them in black, leave them white. Careful not to draw on the table when, when you're doing this. Make mommy or daddy put down a piece of paper for you. Now it looks like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now you take your glue and put it on the top part of the white, not on the horns, only on the head. You take your cotton balls, as many as you want to, Stick them down. Now it should look like this. And then ask someone to help you make a hole on each side of the head. Remember to be very careful with this part, not to do it on your own. Now you take your elastic, put it through, make a knot, another knot, and then you take it to the other side, put it through. Make a knot, make a knot, and now all that's left to do is to put it on your head, and now you have a ram mask. Hi kids, how's it going? I hope you had a great week. So, we're going to do a memory verse again. I hope you guys remember from last time, but by to those that don't, here it goes. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Okay, let's do it one more time. Slow mo this time. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Cool. Now fast motion. Before we walk by faith, but not by sight. Cool. And now we're going to do that thing without any words. And that's 2 Corinthians 5 or 7. Enjoy, guys. 2 Corinthians 5 or 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. A little bit slower, Coro. 2 Corinthians 5 or 7. No, no, no. Slower. 2 Corinthians 5 or 7. We walk by faith, and not by sight. Let's do it again. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 We walk by faith and not by sight Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, we're gonna pray Are yeah. you ready, Franza? I am ready Great, guys, let's close our eyes and let's talk to Jesus Amen Lord, thank you for this wonderful day, Lord God Thank you that we can know that we are in your hands, Lord Amen. Jesus, I want to thank you that you are the final sacrifice and that we don't have to offer anything else except our worship and our hearts to you, Lord Jesus. 
We love you and we bless you for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, thank you that we, we know that you only want our hearts. You want to be first in our lives. And thank you that, that by the choices we make, we put you first and yes. that we can have faith in you. Amen. Amen. Guys, we want to encourage you to spend time in the Word, spend time praying, and obey mom and dad, and remember to live for Jesus. We want to encourage you to step out in faith. Yes. And pray for someone. Go and pray for them. If you see mommy is, mommy is not feeling well or daddy is sick, go and put your hands on them and pray for, for them and believe that they will be healed. That's right. And also generosity is also a form of faith. To use your pocket money, perhaps, and go buy a toy for one of your friends and quickly go deliver it at their homes. That is also an act of faith. So, we want to encourage you to step out in faith. And also, generosity can also be to do things for people, like to help mommy with the dishes. That's right. Or take out the black bag. There's a lot of examples. I'm, we're going to leave it so that you can think of a few. Yes. But you must have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye! Bye.